Thank you very much everyone for joining this afternoon. Um, this is the second inner wellness uh, session that Sahel Mirza has delivered. Um, I am Rebecca Saunders-Jones, I'm from Future U, Head of Operations, and I'm joined by Alex Hepworth, who's in our marketing team. Hi Alex. And obviously Sahel is going to be leading this um, webinar this afternoon. This is the second in the series of three. If you haven't or if you couldn't make the first one, Alex is about to share the link with you so you can um, access it via our YouTube channel. And there'll also be a link in an email that you're going to get tomorrow. So you will be able to access that if you haven't seen it before. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sahel. Thank you, uh, Rebecca. Thanks, Alex. And welcome, everybody. Good to see familiar faces uh, from last time. And uh, so, just as a reminder if we go to the next uh slide um if you, we are in a series of three the first webinar we looked at some steps that we were going to share which we will come back to because they're really really important and be great to get feedback if anyone's tried them and maybe open up some of the uh, discussion uh, around them but what we're going to do today is take a bit of a deeper dive on what sits behind uh, our emotions because from last time I mentioned it's our emotions that really dictate the quality of our life of how we're feeling day to day and uh, we're going to look behind that a little bit and just begin to explore ahead of webinar three uh, if we go to the uh, next slide uh, I've been very fortunate in the work that I do to meet with people right across the NHS social care and wellness uh, remains pretty much top of the agenda in terms of retain, retention, I met uh, uh, since the last webinar uh, the chief executive of the Nursing and Midwifery Council. Of course, regulates uh, eight hundred thousand nurses on their uh, on their register, and uh, her comments were that the pressure on the healthcare workforce at the moment remains at a level that she hadn't really seen for a very long time, and therefore anything that can be done to support wellness is really important. And before I dive into a reminder on that, so Rebecca, just to give you an opportunity, and Alex. Um, future you we, we've made this a really important part of our broader offering of universal access to free education and I think uh, the future you summit we, we it was a, a big topic in terms of wellness and how we can support the people who are our learners yeah absolutely we, uh, we we put focusing on our learners as absolutely the heart of what we do but also we're trying to weave the offering that we give our learners um, to ourselves as well and so we are doing our kind of in-person conference at the moment and having a having a short wellness session by uh, Sahel yesterday was is absolutely fantastic so um, I can say my own experience some of the things that Sahel's going to do today really are powerful and, and can really really help uh, daily lives. Thank you very much okay so quick reminder um, in terms of what I said at the webinar I made two promises to everybody everything I'm sharing is experiential something that I've done that has helped my well-being and helped others so it's not just theory the books in the background it's not a virtual background I do actually read those books so there's a lot of theory behind this um, but it's about what what can you do immediately after this webinar that's that's what our focus is and the second promise I made is that I would always tell the truth which is that some of the steps are not easy none of them are really easy but some of them are, are harder than others and therefore when that comes up the benefit is worth it in my opinion but i will also point out that this is going to be harder than perhaps one of the other steps so just a quick reminder of the inclusive inner wellness approach and then we'll um, move on to the core topics and move to the next slide uh, please uh, rebecca you can click both points um, the focus was on the heart love being the center of the approach of being authentic mind body and spirit we talked about the spirit being a sense of connection meaning and purpose of so all of this the whole person within and, and without is what we're looking at is what the inclusive inner wellness approach attempts to do to help us be truly ourselves and i mentioned the spiritual practices these things have now been scientifically investigated as they haven't been before uh, and the evidence-backed practices are the ones that i'm sharing with you so if we go uh, to the next slide that's the model that I created. We take people through that over a period of time and wherever they may be now, hopefully by the end, there's a way to really access who they are authentically and bring that sense of flourishing that we all deserve. Now, I said uh, we're gonna, if you go to the next slide, please, um, and just leave it there. So what we're focusing on, I talked last time about our emotions at the surface level and how important they are, um, but what sits behind that what drives 
our behaviors, what drives the way that we feel. And there are a number of things that are at play here according to human need psychology, which is what uh, informs my approach. And I want to, with your help and your participation, as much as you want, you don't have to, it's fine. You can listen to my voice completely. I'm sure it'll be, it'll be more entertaining than uh, uh, just uh, listening to me, but hopefully we'll hear from all of you or some of you. Unveiling our authenticity is so important. Here are a couple of questions before we get into the meat. The first question I wanted to ask everybody, you just click on this, please. Okay, what's more important to you? Being a success, whatever that may mean, or being truly connected to others? Which is more important? If you have to choose, you can write in the, uh, in the chat pages if you want. So Alex has said connected to others. That's definitely mine. Rebecca's book connection. Just be interested to hear what people say about that. Definitely connection from Caroline. Sarah's book connection as more important of the two. Doesn't mean the other one isn't important. Okay, so we've got a couple of people saying there. And, and that's an easy was that an easy decision, Rebecca, Alex? For you guys? Because success is important, right? We're we're in a world where that's highlighted a lot in terms of social media and things that we need to do. Um, but I think we get a universal connection to others being more important. Yeah, this was it was an easy one, this one. Okay. I think, I think success is so hard to define as well. So you, you might feel like you're, you're striving to be successful in something, but then inevitably something else becomes the thing you're striving for. So I don't, I don't know if you can ever truly be successful. So um, Good yeah. Question. Good question. Mm -hmm. Do we have a raised hand? Yeah, I think Kano, you've raised your hand. Do you have anything you'd like to share? Yeah, I, um, yes, I would like to share um, about being, if being a success or truly connected. Mm -hmm. I think being connected is the most important thing because when you're connected, you're working towards um, being successful. So, but if you're just being success, if you're just standing on the success path, that means you're not connected with anybody. Mm. And you will not be able to strive to, you know, extend or explore. But when you're connected, you're working towards being successful. No, absolutely. Interesting. And I think, uh, thank you, uh, Kanayo. And I think we've seen others now, Ade and Ike have confirmed that. Okay, okay. Uh, here's a more slightly different question now. We're going to, uh, success is such a huge variable. It means different things to different people, I feel, Caroline. Uh, yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. Okay. Let's go to the next uh, question, uh, Rebecca. Would you rather have clarity about the future or do you prefer life to give you surprises? You've got to choose one. Which one do you prefer? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first because I'm waiting for everyone to mull that over in their head. For me, clarity comes ahead of surprise. doesn't mean I don't like surprises. Don't hear me incorrectly. Uh, don't, it doesn't mean I don't like surprises, but I prefer to have certainty or clarity. Okay, now this is coming out interesting. Okay, Sarah saying clarity. Uh, Sylvia, Clarity, Rebecca, I, th I think Clarity too. This is weighing me up. You're weighing me up. No, yeah, no. I mean, I'm not saying I don't like surprises, but I do think if the, those who know me most would agree that I uh, I like Clarity. Okay, M uh, Mel's, if I pronounce that correctly, Melez, Mel's, uh, Clarity, Julie, Clarity. Okay, that's a surprise. I thought it'd be that surprised me. Uh, can I your Clarity? Okay. Um, same as you, Sahel, but it's not as clear cut as the first question. <laughs> okay, Caroline. No, it isn't. It isn't, right? And now, did did anyone have any pressure when you had that thought process, Rebecca? Which one should I go for? Was there a pressure to go for surprises? Because people who like clarity tend to be regarded tend to be less adventurous or a bit too dull. Was there was there a pressure going on in your internal dialogue? Yeah, a, li a little bit. Yeah. So you know, if I said I like clarity, does that Give the impression that I'm boring. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Okay. No. No. Absolutely. Thank you for admitting it. That's great. Um, the reason I ask that, um, I, I will say clarity. So this is Anita. I will say clarity. But sometimes life gives us surprises. Hell yes, that's true for sure. Um, okay, Sylvia, no pressure at all. Okay. Right. Now, the important point there. It's, what's interesting is that there was a pressure. We've admitted there from Rebecca. We should maybe we should say surprises because that, that makes us feel a bit more adventurous, right? So there's a pressure externally. Now, what's the right answer to this question? 
What's the right answer? Anyone going to hazard a clue? It's a trick question. Please there is no right answer. Absolutely, Caroline, right? 100%. There isn't because whatever is true for you is the right answer. And I think that's what we've got to bear in mind. And that pressure point, the first one is that usually people will say connection. And, and, and uh, you know, Kanal, you're, you're absolutely right. Success and fulfillment are different things. I think we've all met people who are successful, perhaps, who are not fulfilled. It's a slight difference there. Um, and the pre preference around clarity or surprise is built in. And the idea is that we need to find out what's important to us. We have to be authentic because sometimes we'll accept things because we feel we must. And then over time, that begins to hurt. It can be in a relationship, it can be in work, some things that are important to you. If they're important and fundamental and you've compromised, we've got to do some compromise. You've compromised, that can work against you. So let's keep that in mind, okay, as we delve into it a little bit deeper. Let's go to the next slide. It's human needs psychology. So a couple more questions that we're just going to float around. First one, I've asked those about those specific things, but if I asked you directly, if we met for the first time, we were just chatting, which emotion or feeling is most important for you to experience? What would you do anything to feel more than anything else? Love, laughter, fulfillment, contentment, happiness, craziness. Have a think about that. Happiness for Julie, contentment from Alex, safety from Sylvia. Thank you for that. Joy, brilliant. Honesty, fabulous. These are the emotions you want more. Fulfillment from uh, Canario. Thank you for that. Well, that doesn't come as a surprise after your uh, excellent analysis there. Um, Okay, that's, that's great. So this is the emotion, and you don't have to share, put it in your mind. What's most important for you to feel? The emotion that you want more than anything else. Uh, Oladeje is, uh, said safety. Rosemary has talked about acceptance. Okay, all, all really good. Right, having that in mind, next question. Next question. Having got acceptance, Rosemary, or fulfillment, can I, or uh, honesty, Caroline, joy from Rebecca, uh, contentment from Alex that's one emotion right it's got it's got a richness to it what about what next if, if once you've got that what's the next most important thing that you want clarity certainty surprises love from Rebecca everything from Judith we love to set the bar high I like that okay balance from Sylvia brilliant answer interesting so for me the most important emotion, just to share, for me, the most important emotion for me to feel is love. By far the most important. The next is certainty or clarity. And that, for me, I know is because in my younger life, I had too much uncertainty, whatever that looked like. And therefore, it's really important for me. The important thing is we don't need to know why we feel that necessarily. We can go through therapy to work that out. But right now, it's important to get those things. So certainty from, I trust from Caroline safety from Sheila. So that's come up a couple of times, uh, safety and certainty. Okay, so bear that in mind. Now, I just want to elaborate a little bit on this now uh, so that we understand where this is all going. So if we go to the next slide, human needs psychology says that all behaviors ultimately are driven by the same imperatives, a balance of them. I want to concentrate on the top four. We fulfill these imperatives or drives whether we like it or not, we have to fulfill them. We have to feel a sense of connection. Love can be a synonym for connection. You don't have to be loved. We need to feel connected because we're social. We need to feel significant or important or successful. They're synonyms. We all need it in one way or another. We need novelty or surprise, right? We may need that less than we need certainty or clarity. But all four of these things we are doing every day, we're seeking to fulfill them. Now, those four, are the fundamental core things and they are picked by you can be very successful fulfilling those four but if you want to find fulfillment going back to uh Kanoyo's comment that difference the bottom three imperatives are where we look beyond ourselves so we want to develop self-develop we want to serve others if you can find a way to serve others that makes a huge difference and if you can find meaning and purpose on a broader level in what you do whatever that may be, 
you're much more likely to feel a sense of flourishing and fulfillment. So these imperatives are the ones that drive us. And that's why I wanted to see, and there's no right or wrong answer. Human needs psychology says that these change over time. We normally have two priorities. We normally have two that dominate the way we look at the world. And there's no right or wrong. And sometimes over life, they change. It can be to do with age. It can be to do with uh, life experiences, children. It, does, it doesn't matter. The key thing is to be honoring and have the sovereignty to accept that, that they are your choices, not for someone else to give you that choice. So we've talked about a couple of things, so joy and love, um, uh, Rebecca, Alex, we, I think you talked about, um, uh, do you say certainty? I can't remember, I can't see the thing now. What did you say? You said- Contentment. Sorry, contentment. Okay, so let, let me ask a question now. And again, I've asked you to think about this, all of you, um, in your own ways, and I'll pick on Alex and, and Rebecca a little bit on this one. How do you seek contentment? What what do you do to find contentment? And the same with Rebecca, how do you find joy? Now I know music and it's because I happen to know you about that. That might be a vehicle. How do you find joy? How do you find contentment? What vehicles do you use? It's probably linked to some of the other ones. So connect with the people that I love, okay. um, laugh with my children, you know, get out in nature and look at a sunrise you know the, the kind of simple things i think but it does overlap with the connection with people and feeling love as well okay alex for me i love i love to make plans um plans with friends i love to travel um day to day i i really enjoy practicing yoga i find i'm very i just have to stand on the mat and i feel very relaxed so um, and, and happy and I always feel better when I when I've done any kind of movement whether it be yoga or walk or game of tennis uh, even if I'm ne not necessarily feeling like I want to do it beforehand I always do feel much much happier after okay thank you so have a think about it um, all of you that you've written here um, Sylvia safety Caroline honesty um, happiness for Peter how do you find that? Because that's the motion you want more than anything else, right? How do you find that? So just to elaborate on that, the, the vehicles that we use, and Alex, thank you, Rebecca, thank you for sharing that. The vehicles we use are important because we get to choose them. And sometimes the vehicles can be the ones that give us those things, but are not going to serve us. So an example might be someone who has success as one of the top two emotions. Nothing wrong with that. That's their goal. That's up to them. But uh, I'm sure you'll agree, you can be successful in an organization by developing yourself, getting qualifications, supporting your team, having a vision, all of those things. You can also be successful in an organization. I'm not, not saying it happens at any organization that we are part of, but you could be, have you ever heard of people who actually backstab, keep other people in their places because they want to stay in their title position? Must have, in theory at least, I'm sure we've come across the people who do that. Now, those individuals are still fulfilling the same imperative of success, but the vehicle they're using arguably is not going to be empowering for them in the longer run because it's driven by fear ultimately, and it won't be for the greater good. So I ask the questions, that have a think, what vehicles are you using? Now, love and connection is another one uh, that's very important. It's come up a lot. It's my number one. Um, and without value judgment, I think you'll agree, people can find love and connection in a romantic relationship, for example, um, by finding someone whose values are aligned, visions are aligned, and people have a way to bring out the best in each other unconditionally. You can also find love and connection through many, many transient in interconnections with people. I'm not making a value judgment on either, but people I've coached over time one of those is going to be more supportive for you than the other. So the important thing to bear in mind, if you want safety, how can you have safety? I'm so I'm going to pick on you, but safety comes up a lot with people that I coach. So people want safety. There's a number of ways of doing that. One way that you could have safety, and I have coached an individual who effectively became hermit-like, just did their work and wouldn't take any risks at all for various reasons which we don't need to go into. That was their vehicle to what they absolutely wanted. They had first trauma and uh, terrible surprises, which weren't very good. No criticism, but that vehicle long-term won't support them. You can also have safety 
in a different way because you, what you're looking for is certainty by being prepared for a particular project making sure you do all the work that you need to do because what you're looking for is a sense of certainty so have that in your mind take that away and think through what vehicles am i using to get the emotion i will do anything more and it's more than anything to achieve is that vehicle the best one for me are there other vehicles that i can use it's worth thinking about sometimes people get significant overworking working too long presenteeism that's very very common nowadays so have a think around that because the key thing here if we go to the next slide is that the drivers of human behavior are the same but the vehicles we use are different and that's something for us to bear in mind and think about now there's another level which we're not going to go into today but i'm just going to touch upon it briefly if i may um and you don't have to answer this um alex content then you said you've how you would find contentment rebecca you've said joy and love how will you know when you have it how will you know when you when you have joy what needs to happen for you to feel love i'll answer that question because i don't want to put anyone on the on the line here so, but i'd be i'd welcome uh, what needs to happen for you to feel happy peter or to feel that sense of safety sylvia uh, or to feel that fulfillment, Kanaya, what needs to happen? Someone said to me, right, write down what you need to happen. So for me, love, if we look at romantic love, for me to feel that, I need to hear that. I need someone to say that to me with sincerity. I can, people can buy me all the presents they want. If I don't hear the words, I will not feel loved. But that's a very important thing for me. Other people have different rules. I, I worked with uh, um, a couple where one individual, in order to feel love, they were they had to believe that they could be open about anything they want and use any language that they want because that was being honest, including profane language, and that's fine. Their partner believed that in order to be loved, the person who loves you would never raise their voice at you or use language that was offensive. Can you see what might happen when there's a clash there with someone, I'm being honest, and I'm using all these languages and the recipient is saying, oh my God, all they're hearing is they don't love me. They don't, they don't love me. So we all have a bunch of rules in our head that determine when we get to feel the most important emotions. So you don't have to share, have a think about what those rules are because that's really, really important. And now just briefly, I'm gonna flip it the other way uh, and say, what's the emotion that you would most want to avoid feeling? What's a feeling you absolutely don't want to feel? For me, the feeling that I'm not enough or feeling a failure or rejection would apply to me. Anyone else? What emotions would you do anything to avoid feeling? Peter's written unconditional love. That is my joy to me, dread, so rejection, regret, okay, from uh, Alex. Uncertainty or undervalued, okay, rejection, right. So, so these are important because having that feeling is something we'll do anything to avoid. Has anyone occasionally felt like a failure? I know I have. Anyone felt rejected or not enough? I have. How do we minimize that happening? I'm not somebody who can say that can never happen to you. Then you can always be happy all the time. If you can find a way to do that, let me know, because I'd love to have that bill. But how can we minimize that? What we can do is set up some rules that make that far less likely to happen. So have a think about that. So for example, I'm just going to give one, because I'm going to go into this a lot in the next um, webinar. So fear of failure is a huge topic. Um, and I had that a lot because there was a couple of incidents when I was much younger where that, if you have a, a powerful emotional event, it, it gets seared into your head. Um, and that fear of failure was very strong. And even though I did lots of things, I was still battling with the fear to overcome it all the time. And then I decided, now, hang on a minute, I, I'm, I'm defining failure as if I don't get this super high standard or get a, an A in my subject or I don't do it to a world class level. Sometimes we set ourselves unrealistic expectations, would that be fair? And then we feel really terrible when we don't get those. I'm not saying reduce them. 
the standards, keep the standards high. But failure, I now define failure. I feel a failure if two conditions are fulfilled. One, that I haven't even tried. I haven't even bothered trying. I'm, I'm going to run a marathon, Rebecca. That's what I'm going to say to you. I'm going to commit to running a marathon in six months. But I don't do any preparation for it at all. And I don't bother turning up. Then I'll take that label. Now, the likelihood of us doing nothing towards something is quite low. We can always do some steps towards it. And the second condition that has to be fulfilled is that I've learned nothing from the experience. Anyone set a goal and not achieve it? Anyone been given a project, haven't quite delivered it? Right? Have you learned something from that experience? Has that been of value to take to the next? So if we, if we define failure in that way, it's very different. And if we're in love with somebody and I define failure as not being my true self and not loving unconditionally, as long as I do those things, I can control those things. The behavior of the other individual reflects their values and preferences, not mine. Because we often feel like a failure if we've been through a breakup or have been divorced or a friendship that's ended, a job that hasn't worked out. We have to look in the mirror. So try to do that. And this is a little bit of a teaser for webinar three. We're going to go into a little bit more detail there so that we can unpack some of these things and make it far harder to feel those emotions you don't want and, and a lot easier to feel the emotions that you do want. Guilt, Rebecca, is an interesting one. Uh, rejection from Peter, uncertainty and undervalued. Does that make sense in terms of the values and rules that people have? Okay, thank you. Right, that's the core thing that we should go away from today. What I'd like to do in the second half of the webinar is to revisit some of the steps that we did in webinar one because they're so important and it gives us an opportunity because we rattled through them last time for people to have any questions or comments about the steps and how they've got on or not got on with them uh, and anything that we can sit, share to help them along the way. So if we go to the next uh, slide, we're going to, I normally take people through this whole series over a period of time. So to get, how, how can we get clarity? Because this has been a really big goal for many people. Step that we're going to go to is, uh, if you've got the next slide, is have gratitude. Build that in to, to have that within you as a daily experience. And what I mean by that, is we give gratitude for the big things in our life, our loved ones, our health, gratitude for three things at least that have happened in the previous 24 hours. Because language is really important. We sometimes feel overwhelmed when we know that there's an abundance around us that can liberate us from that sense of lack. We've got to make it part of our DNA. And the big and small stuff I've talked about is just a, a label. It all matters, the amount of gratitude we give. Just open up the floor to see anyone who's tried this or anyone who's who's doing it. Has it made a difference? Does anyone do this on a on a basis at all? Alex, Rebecca, we touched upon it yesterday. Uh, so I think we had a few people do it, had a, had a, had a go at it yesterday. Yeah, um, I actually, whilst I was brushing my teeth this morning, I um, did the exercise where I thought of three things that have happened in the last 24 hours that I'm grateful for and then three i thought of three people that i'm grateful for um and yeah i i i really enjoyed it it took you know a minute out of my day but um yeah. it definitely uh, lifted my mood which was really nice no that's great and that's sort of accords i know that yoga and all that idea of being centered and present is also something that you're very very passionate about um and i think hopefully that the idea is to, to in yoga i know yoga very well it's also to have a sense of acceptance and actually there's an abundance that you already have absolutely and just remembering that all is well um that's the that's what i keep telling myself all is well if i'm ever feeling stressed i just repeat that mantra and that helps me a lot <laughs> brilliant um anyone else tried it um from last time just be interested uh, to see it so remember the old the goal is three minutes that's what we need is three minutes uh, at each day or each one and what I tend to do is to focus on um, the people I'm grateful for. You said, Alex, you mentioned three people that you were grateful for. So I, I really look at those individuals uh, in my mind, picture them, even if they're not here anymore, and to give gratitude. I also walk around saying thank you out loud uh, for things uh, which might be a bit strange, but it makes me feel 
that sense of abundance the three things from uh, yesterday I, I got a i had a reasonably good drive back on the m25 from the summit yesterday so i'll get I, it only took me two and a half hours i thought it might take four so that's something to give um gratitude for okay right next one so quick so here we go Karen, not necessarily three minutes but on and off throughout the day often when walking my dog yeah but, okay so caroline thanks for sharing that um in terms of when we do it um i think better to do it than not at all i recommend at the beginning of each day if you can because it just starts the day before your mind starts racing off a thousand miles an hour um but i think if you even if you do i think alex said it's a minute and you verbalized it i i tend to write down the three things that i was grateful for the previous day into a notebook so that i can have a whole list to have to look back on um but you don't have to do that if it's easy to verbalize that's great uh, walking the dog is is a good way to do it i think that's a nice way of just finding uh, a sense of presence and if you look at if you walk uh, like my dog not such long walks now he's a 17 year old chihuahua uh, as some people know and he sort of walks only for a little while and that's about it but he's all he's still very very focused um so caroline sort of love my notebook too so is that a notebook that you write is it journaling or, or is that something just with thoughts that uh, you do it on a daily basis or you don't have to speak if you would speak by all means but just be intrigued both okay so journaling is something else that we can use to capture what's happened if you have the time uh, that's really really good and i think with the verbal uh, remembrance absolutely do that rather than not but when i wrote it down at the end of the week i can i can just flick back if it's a bit of been a bit of a strange week or a bit challenging i just have a flick through and there's 84 things they can be small they can be quite significant but that's it gives you a sense of resource within you so thanks for that uh caroline really appreciate that okay so creativity is the the, the next uh, point that we're going to talk about and how do we inculcate the idea of having those moments of uh, sometimes eureka or insights which are not discursive so they're not just something we have to thrash out in our own mind contemplation is the exercise that helps a lot with this we talked about the idea of and i'll come on to you alex because you obviously yoga is very relevant here um i recommend starting small again three minutes seated and a breathing exercise literally inhale exhale no judgment and just be an observer use a word or a mantra if that will help you to stay focused or uh, look at uh, something that uh, helps you a point on the ground or a picture to keep you centered and whenever the words come in or because they will go crazy it's just to observe them and let them go you don't have to fight with them that that's how i would start and then work from there and the idea actually is to just be fully present and what I found has made a quite a big difference. So again, be interested to see if anyone's tried that, um, anyone who meditates or prays, how often has that had an effect? What does it do? Alex, just briefly on the yoga point, this is your far advanced in uh, doing these three minutes. Uh, how did that journey start? Did it, at first it must've been quite challenging having not done it before. Absolutely, it was a, it was a very long journey. And um, I'm, I, I don't know if you can ever become an expert in it. Um, I struggle to switch off the thoughts in my mind um, and my mind often is very busy. So um, I think it's about accepting that thoughts will come and go, your mind will wander while you're doing this, um, but actually that's fine. Just acknowledge those thoughts as they come and go. Um, but it really is about kind of practicing it and, and making it a habit. And some days um, you, you just the time runs away and um and you're really there in the moment and other days that's just simply not possible but that's absolutely fine either way um i'm actually going to share in the chat um a blog post that we um published this month which has some breathing techniques in it and if anyone's interested um in in looking at this a little bit further it can help with that quietening of the mind if you're focusing on a particular way of breathing so i'll share that now yeah that would be great and do you do that at a particular time uh is that a, is, is that a particular time of day or is it just a set set is it a set in your in your diary or is it does it vary 
it, it varies really it just depends when i have the time so sometimes um if i'm feeling particularly sprightly i might um get up and do something before work but often it's it's right before bed okay okay yeah that's that's a good i tend to do it in the morning uh it just starts my day um but it doesn't mean i don't do it during the day sometimes because you know, you're talking about a few minutes and things get get crazy uh caroline's talking about that walk walking with the dog that's a sort of a you know, you're in a, in a flow moment um, but doing it centered in uh, uh, at the beginning of the day tends to work and as you said in the last um, webinar the advantage of this is hopefully you can separate yourself from the from the comments that you hear because often some of the words that we hear in our head can be less than kind or they're reminders or they're just uh, imaginations that don't quite work so I think I think we've got uh, Kanayo and uh, Mukan Kusi have raised their hands. If you have, um, please go ahead. I think that might be from earlier on in the. Oh, was it earlier? Not okay. Sure. Oh, My apologies. Okay, so we've got the blog. I must cut them down. So we've got the blog there. Great. So thank you. Um, let's move to the next uh, point here. And we talked around contrition. So the, sorry, the, the arrow has gone to the wrong place. I keep blowing back to clarity. So we talked about contrition last time. Uh, the sense of self-forgiveness if we click, go on to the next point and how important uh, that is and i think the the the, the summary here is, is in the word kind you know we just need to be kinder to ourselves um all of us and everyone that i've ever, ever done any work with on a one-to-one -one basis or group basis they have gone on this journey where they've had uh, so many regrets and i think people have had regrets come up a bit on the conversation about things that are now in the past. Now we can learn from them, but to be, I think, carry them today, we don't need to do that. Malcolm has raised a hand. I, I have heard that in a medical book with unforgiveness uh, to yourself is uh, brings out the stiffness in your shoulders. And there was a whole list of unforgiveness to others and yourself and everything. And the, the physical effects it was have on your, on your body, which was quite interesting. Yeah, no, no, I think it's a powerful connection, Malcolm, that people are now seeing, I think, more mainstream. I think some of the older traditions have talked about forgiveness for a long time, but you're right. It's now connected to the idea that actually feeling that guilt or feeling a sense or being reminded of, sometimes we might have families that remind us of our shortcomings. I, I have that. Um, sometimes reminded of things that happened 28 or 38 years ago that I did or yeah. did not do, and and that if you if you internalise it, you're right because sometimes it, it has to it's energy, right? So it has to manifest somewhere. So it might manifest in constrictions physically. So I think the idea that that actually by letting go of that energy, you can actually unlock or unknot certain things. I think is really powerful. I think I think you're right and. My own experience is I, I had these things that were in my mind, things where I had not done things I should have done or I did fail to do things. And I carried that guilt. It's, it's like a weight. It's a heavy weight. Uh, and now, after that period, I said in the last webinar, I'd gone through all of the things. I can say confidently, 98% of the time, or not, it's reduced by 98%, the, the, those oppressive guilt-ridden memories of those things they've, they've they've gone and it was hard to do to actually get rid of it to say sorry um but it was worth it because i literally can feel the the weight so is that something you've done or you've just seen because it's interesting you've read about it you are uh, unforgiveness is very very powerful um i am a christian so yep. it's supposed Christ, unforgiveness is obviously part of our culture but um, which is a very hard thing to try and um, do personally. But um, I did read about that in a medical book, which was which was quite interesting because he was coming from a different angle. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you for that. Yeah. Now, uh, I think I said in the last webinar, it's so interesting. You mentioned your Christian. I'm, I'm a Muslim by uh, by by faith, and I, I actually took confession uh, with oh, a, right. with a Jesuit, um, a scholar and a priest. He's passed away now. He's a wonderful human being and uh, i had a chance to meet him i met many people from different faiths and I ended up taking confession it felt very liberating uh for me so i'm not saying everyone should do that by the way i'm just just sharing that because you mentioned it uh, malcolm but we've got the medical uh uh support around that and also the other quick thing there to bear in mind is 
the forgiveness for the big stuff, self-forgiveness. I'm talking about self-forgiveness here, must be clear. Forgiving other people for things, that, that is a Christian thing to do. There's a lot around that, but that's a separate um, pathway, which I'm not covering here because it's, a, it's more yeah. complex. Uh, but I think the other thing is on a day-to-day -day basis or weekly, we all we all get over overwhelmed sometimes, might be a bit short with our friends, a bit of road rage. I didn't have any road rage on the M25 yesterday. Um, but if we do, we can forgive ourselves. Caroline said, we're our own worst critics. This is a huge hurdle for some people. Self-forgiveness is unbelievably hard. It is a tremendous challenge. As I said to you, I'll be truthful uh, when I started this. That was the hardest one that I went through. And it took me over weeks and weeks and weeks being alone late at night on my own and walking through all those things. But I just carried that stuff for too long. And it went, it was worth it. It is doable. That's what I'll say, Caroline. It can be done. And it changes the lens of how you look at the world. Self-love ultimately is love for all of us because I think they connect. It, it worked for me. And, and uh, you know, if you're trying that, you're more than welcome to email me uh, and um, just share whatever you do. Not the content, just it's hard. I'll say, hell, you told me this would work. I'm, this is not working. Whatever you want to do. Um, but it, it's, it really reaps its rewards enormously. Okay, next uh, next point. I think um, Kaneo has her oh, hand raised as well. Sorry, so I've ignored that because I thought it was the earlier one. I'm, I'm no good at this. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. So I um, actually want to add something to the forgiveness, self-forgiveness. Yeah, um, I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity because I was talking to someone yesterday concerning forgiveness. She was actually dwelling on her past life that is affecting her present life. So I was telling her that when you dwell on your past life that it's going to affect your future which that at the moment you cannot be able to think right and then focus on your future so um in as much as you're trying to forgive yourself from your past mistakes try to occupy yourself that occupy your mind with something positive in order to achieve something reasonable in future because whatever happens now is going to affect your future in as much as you try all your possible best, but once you forgive yourself for not being um, a good person, maybe in a relationship, you are thinking, I would have married this person, I would have gone this way with this person, and presently is affecting you. So I think what you need to do is to apply that, what you could have done to your present time in order to have a better life. So that's my contribution for the forgiveness. No, no, <laughs> thank you. No, you, you're, uh, thank you. Thank you. And you're absolutely right. We have now, The Power of Now is a very well-known book and all those type of things, and the future. And I think if you apply the things that you might, should have done or could have done now and to look at the future, that's very powerful. I would add that if you can, to go to Caroline's point, if you can find yourself to go back to those things that, if they're oppressing you, you might not have that. I carried a lot of that stuff, right? And what I found was... Uh, it, it affected my energy levels and it impeded my thought processes because it, you're having a sense of self-judgment and that makes you feel less flourishing. And all the world's traditions talk about uh, forgiveness, all of them. And therefore I drew on that and that's what allowed me to then unlock that. But if it becomes a habit, which it was for me, to click back into those like your friend, then you, what you're doing is you're creating a neural pathway anyway for that, for that memory to be embedded. So you have to break it down. And that requires hard work. Um, we've got a question of, is there a relationship between personality and forgiveness? Big question, big issue. So personality, um, I think, is a function uh, of all the vicissitudes that have happened in our lives, the good, bad, and ugly that we, that we project to the world. I think there's an inner core to us, which is brave and beautiful. Whatever happens, that's my belief. Uh, that's what my inner wellness is, is based on. And if we can connect to that, core then i think we can supersede personality which which is much more fluid it doesn't mean it's not important but that contemplation piece helps you to separate the noise to the inner self because if you're the observer and you're hearing this voice which is your voice often and you think it's you but if you're observing it it can't be you there's something deeper so i think we can transcend personality to our true essence and core that i think helps us to get that forgiveness conscious of the time thank you for that question um and good luck caroline uh, i will make it work 
I, I'm sure you will. It's, it will reap rewards. So visualization, we've now, it's a topic we talked about last time. All the top sports stars' performance uh, uh, psychology tells us if we focus on what we want to do, it's much more likely that we will be able to do it. Why? Not by just sitting down, because it makes us believe it. Our mind can't tell the difference between something that's actually happening and something that we're visualizing. I said last time, anyone here worry about the future? Anyone concerned about their loved ones, their job, uh, the state of the economy, the Suez Canal? Anyone worried about that? Anyone worried sometimes they're not going to get things done that they promised they're going to do? Okay. So this means, and anyone worry more than once a week, even for a second? Once a day? Once an hour? Maybe more than that? A few little thoughts. Right. So that means, congratulations, you are all brilliant at visualization already, but you are visualizing what you do not want to happen. Now, we do need to think about what we don't want to happen because we have to prepare for things, right? We need to take in, you know, uh, uh, jabs and inoc inoculations if we're traveling to a place where we might get uh, an infectious disease of course however why don't we start visualizing about what we do want to happen does that guarantee it's going to happen no will it increase the chances of it happening i think highly likely and the evidence suggests it so given that all of you are superb and practice this a lot because you said that you practice worrying about things that have not yet happened. And is it correct to say that a significant percentage of things that you have worried about in the past did not happen? Right? Some of them, some of them, right? So looking at the odds of that happening, why don't we focus or spend a few minutes, three minutes again, three minutes, on what we want to happen. Maybe we want to get fitter, maybe we want to get this qualification, maybe we want to improve a relationship, whatever it might be. Why don't we visualize where we want to be? I verbalize one year and five year ahead, which is what I said in the last webinar. Choose whatever works for you. I think I gave the example last time of Kobe Bryant, who played, did that a lot. Uh, I'm a Muhammad Ali fan, a big boxing fan. And uh, if you ever know him, all the time, he's visualizing, I'm going to be the champion at this age, this age. And that, that's publicly committing yourself. A few minutes a day, visualize where you want. People have vision boards. Anyone know who's got a vision board? Is that? Does people, do people do that? I, I, I don't do that. I, I put it in my mind. So uh, let's focus focus on that. Okay, next um, next point. So just we've got 10 minutes now to go. So we're now talking about compassion. How can we inculcate compassion, draw out uh, that which is within us to connect with other people and serve other people? What's an exercise that can help us with that? So uh, if we go to the next slide, it's about being authentic. Who can tell when you meet someone if they're being really authentic? Even an intuition of someone being true. Most people can. And it doesn't require language, words. Why? Because there's something within us that connects. If someone is truly being, it means unveiling themselves. So I said last time, we need to be able to give ourselves a few minutes where we are truly ourselves. Not our titles, our gender uh, designation, all of these things inside. There's probably times when, I don't know, Alex might sing in the shower and Rebecca might dance to whatever. I don't know. Whatever makes us free. I think I definitely was singing out loud, which is not a good experience. My voice is terrible uh, on the way back from the M25. I've got such a bad voice. I was at school and uh, my friend and I, we were singing hymns and the teacher actually told us to, st to step out and not take part in the next one was definitely ruined your self-esteem but i had no desire to become a singer so even i knew my voice was terrible but nevertheless it doesn't stop me doing that uh if i'm listening to a particular song or watching a film that brings that feeling of i'll watch a film that will make me cry because you're expressing yourself so whatever it works language is important the language we speak to ourselves is really important and being authentic means accessing that we probably do that time to time probably with our friends, when we're truly ourselves, that inner child, somebody uses that phrase. I think that's our inner core I'm talking about. And if we can do that, we admire and connect with people who, sit, who sing or dance or write or um, sculpt, or we can do that generally. Three minutes uh, every day will be making a big difference. Okay, uh, next, uh, I'm just consciously running out of time. So consider, bring this all together. How do we do that? 
next uh, slide please put these five practices the gratitude for the big stuff the small stuff the contemplation the visualization and those three minutes where we can be free into a daily routine 15 minutes those five things will take you or actually less because alex said that uh, uh, gratitude in, in, in a minute and that's what changed everything for me i didn't want to do it at the time things were falling apart around me in an emotional sense and the voice was saying you've got too many things to do but i started doing it now spend up to 45 minutes doing that in the morning i tend to get up early um it just centers my day and it's an act of healthful self-love and i get answers to some questions and then i learn to trust what those answers are because if you make yourself vulnerable in my opinion in internally then there's a connection to a bigger energy we're all connected in a, in a different way and that's been the benefit to me the self-forgiveness so if we can do that uh, for for 15 minutes i think that will make quite a dramatic difference um i'm conscious we've got a few minutes i want to leave some time for some further questions and answers we've covered this a little bit already i went ahead of myself um this is for webinar three um and you've got the recording, Alex. This will be shared after this, won't you, with everybody? Um, have a think about these questions, if you don't mind, uh, ahead of webinar three, because we're going to dive in a little bit more around all of these things that you've been very gracious enough to share that uh, mean the most to you in terms of emotions and the ones that you want to avoid. And we might try to unpack some of the rules that we're, we're um, inherited or we're told to believe or we've created to, to ourselves uh, to make it much more in our favour. Any questions from anybody from that? And uh, that's my email. You're more than welcome to email me. I promise to respond. It won't be immediately, usually, but I will get back to you. Um, but thank you. That's great. Anything else from anyone? Thanks for your um, contribution, um, uh, Malcolm. Really appreciated that insight on that medical thing. I'll. Uh, Look at that. And uh, Kanai, I really appreciate that uh, distinction uh, in terms of uh, being present and not having that past uh, affect us. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Sahail. Um, Alex, do you want to uh, just tell the everyone what can they can expect tomorrow? Uh, yes, absolutely. So um, I've Thank just been you. added a few uh, links into the chat. So um, tomorrow I'll be sending an email to everybody, um, just asking for feedback, sharing a link to the recording. So if anybody wants to um, revisit anything that Sahel's covered today, they can do that. And there will also be a link um, to register for the final webinar, uh, which is on Wednesday, the 7th of February at 2 p.m. There's also a link in the chat there. Um, and I've added a couple more links um, I've shared Sahel's email address in case you want to contact him directly. Um, and I've also shared a link through to our inner wellness course or the introduction of our inner wellness course, which you can find on the Future You platform. Um, so uh, exploring some of the topics that Sahel's covered um, in a bit more detail over there as well. Um, but thank you very much, everybody. Just to add on to that, um, everyone, the, the, the course is it's been a privilege for me to take a lot of the things I've covered here and go into more detail with the great team at Future You that created those courses. Um, you know, they did some magical work to make it really interactive. I appreciate there's a lot we've covered here in this time. And also sometimes it's not, um, people are not always comfortable publicly to share what they want to share uh, around these steps. So all of the steps that we've covered today, uh, the courses go through those methodically. You can go, go through them at your own pace. And there's some fun things there which uh, our, our, our very creative people have made it come alive so it's not just my voice there will be other things that will be far more entertaining brilliant thank you very much everyone have a great rest of your day